Hi there, in this screencast, I'm gonna go over animating um, a sprite. Uh, now, the animation is only gonna be for our side-scrolling game, so I'm just gonna have the sprite running uh, to the right or to the east. If you have a bird, you might have them flying to the east, like in Flappy Bird, or uh, something as long as you're gonna animate your character to make give them some kind of movement uh, animation. So the first thing you want to do is find the sprites that uh, make up the animation sequence and you need to copy them into the images folder of uh, your game. And these sprites can be found uh, in the sprites folder on the intro to comp size shared, uh, let me see, what is it called? Shared drive. Um, so if you look in there, you're going to find all kinds of sprites. You want to look for one that shows a motion pattern with them running to the right or moving to the right. So I'm using this, the uh, black stick man. So um, I put in the files for him running in that direction. And I can see that there's five of them. And they're named E0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And the other ones I going to use for another purpose but for this video I'm just using these um, five files so they're sitting in the images folder and they're ready to go so the next thing is uh, you want to go into the class of the sprite that you're going to animate and you're gonna make um, uh, as many Greenfoot image variables as make up the sequence of uh, your your animation pattern so I had five, so I'm going to make five Greenfoot image variables named image zero, image one, two, three, and four. Uh, you may have a different number of uh, image variables because your animation sequence may be anywhere from three images to maybe even 12 or 15 images. Okay, so then I'm also going to make two int variables called animation count and animation speed. Uh, and I'm going to make a constructor method for my um, stickman variable and uh, I mean my stickman class. And that begins with the word public and then the you put the name of the class and then parentheses. Okay, and in the constructor, I'm going to give values to animation count and animation speed. So they're going to be um, zero and animation speed equals five. And then I'm going to uh, load the image files into my Greenfoot image uh, variable. So I'm going to say image zero uh, equals new Greenfoot image. And now I need to find out what the exact names are, including the extension. So, uh, and then I'm going to copy that whole thing. And one trick to doing this is to go into File Explorer, find the file, um, go to the Rename option, which now when you right-click in Windows 11, you have to choose More Options to get the traditional uh, menu where it gives you the chance to rename it. Uh, and then you highlight the name of the file and do either control C or right click to do, do choose the copy. And then, uh, so I go back to my source code and I'm going to copy the entire name, paste the entire name of that file in there in quotation marks with the three letter extension. Okay, and then I'm gonna repeat the process for my other four images. And these are numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 1, 2, 3, and 4. And usually you can uh, just copy and paste and then tweak a number or two. Uh, so this one is 1, 2, 3, and 4. Okay, so now I'm going to go to the act method. And uh, in my case, I want the uh, stickman running when the game is either in startup mode or is in running mode, not when it's finished. 
Uh, I don't have a countdown mode. You can in this game if you want, but you don't really need one. Uh, because as soon as they press start, the obstacles start flying at them from the right, and usually it takes a second or two for them to reach him. Okay, so I'm going to say uh, I have to do the statement that we've done in um, our key spamming games where we get the world that this actor object lives in. So I, the code for that is my world world equals my world get world. And that should be in your key spamming game. You can look in the act method of uh, one of your sprites in the key spamming game and you should see that line of code is the first line of code in the act method. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do if uh, world.get game state call the get game state method of my world dot equals startup Okay. Or that's two vertical slashes. World dot get game state dot equals running. Okay. So if it looks like I put an extra L in there. Okay. So if that is the case, then here's here's the key thing you do. Okay. So uh, you multiply animation speed times how many uh, sprites you have in your sequence. So I have 20. So that means my animation uh, count is going to go between 0 and 20. And every time I hit a multiple of animation speed, I'm going to change the image that I use uh, for uh, the, the actor object or the sprite. So I'm going to say animation count plus plus and I'm going to say um, if uh, animation count let's see equals animation speed Okay. Then I'm going to change the image to be the uh, zero image. So I'm going to say set image image zero. Oh, and you know what? Let me let me take that back. Let me put if animation count equals zero. Okay. Uh, and then I'm going to say else if animation count equals one times animation speed and I'm only putting one times it because I'm going to copy and paste and change that number uh, then let's see what does it oh I need two equal signs for my condition um, then set image image one okay and then as you can probably guess I'm gonna have three more of these okay and then uh, let's see so then this is gonna be two and I'm gonna set it to to image two when it reaches three can set it to three and when it reaches four I'm going to set it to four okay and then when it reaches five I immediately set the animation count variable back to zero so I'm gonna say else if animation well actually you know what I can just copy and paste one more time so notice I had five images and notice the number five right here okay so not only do I set the image 
Oh, I'm sorry. When it reaches five times it, I just set animation count back to zero. Okay, now the beauty of doing it this way is that you can simply change the value that you assign to animation speed. Uh, and the smaller the value, the faster they're going to go because um, you basically are updating the image more frequently because animation count instead of like going between 0 and 25 and only updating the image every fifth time the act method executes and remember it's going 60 times a second uh, well if I make it 2 then it's going to update itself the image every 2 every second time the act method executes which is 60 times a second so that would be going through uh, let's see, five full completions of the animation sequence, or six in this case, uh, if it's two. Okay, so let's see, I uh, can't remember if I put the guy in, I think I did. Let's see if this works. Run, and yes, there, my sprite is moving, or animated, and notice that um, I can do... Uh, the animation speed, I can change it. If I change it to three, okay, it causes him to run really quickly, much faster. If I change it to one, he's just gonna be like lightning fast in his animation pat pat pattern. Run, yeah, okay. Now, the nice thing about this is you can tie this all together, and this is a traditional side-scrolling game. One of the tactics that uh, side-scrolling games use, as you probably know, is they may get harder as, you know, the longer you play the game, the harder it gets. And that may, like in this case, involve uh, causing the, uh, the uh, sprite, uh, the, the player that the uh, user's controlling, to... Uh, go faster or look like they're going faster uh, and I could actually sequence uh, and cause the um, uh, background to move faster as well uh, at the same time and make the animation of uh, the sprite go faster uh, by just changing this one variable or I could even make an, uh, the variable global put it in my world and then have both the scrolling background and the uh, speed of the sprite be tied together. Okay, uh, so that's my little screencast on animating your sprite.